Hello, uh, my name's Peter. I'm one of the directors at Forster Communications. Uh, we're a PR agency with a slight difference. Uh, we only work on social and environmental change. And as a result, we have a lot of clients who are charities or not-for-profit organizations. So what I'm gonna take you through today is uh, a short presentation on some hints and tips about how to write opinion pieces. Now, there are lots of hot takes taking place at the moment because people have more time on their hands, more of us are at home. Organizations are trying to get their voice out there as much as possible, whether related to the coronavirus or some of the impacts that it's having. This is particularly, I think, relevant and important for voluntary organizations, many of whom are struggling at the moment with reductions in their funding and really wanting to get their voice out there. So you may well be a communication professional within the voluntary sector and you've been charged with trying to place opinion pieces for your organization. I've just got some very straightforward, practical ways to help you do so. So, first of all, just wanted to um, let you know what we're going to cover off. So we're going to talk a little bit about the purpose of opinion pieces, why do them, what do you want to do with them, then how you create them from choosing your topic to understanding and writing for the right audience, to creating your own distinctive and engaging authorial voice, then thinking really about how you produce something that's really going to engage those audiences, what the hook might be, what the headline might be, and what the focus might be, as well as then looking at how you use the news agenda to create opportunities for you, some of the practicalities involved in putting together an opinion piece, and then scattered throughout this, some exercises you can do uh, to try and hone your skills. So first of all, the purpose of opinion pieces. Well, uh, there's four key ones, really. First of all, it's got to help you to achieve one of your organization's objectives. Otherwise, why are you doing it? So often, particularly in media relations, uh, there's some pressure for you to do it because we think it's a good thing to do. That getting media coverage is an end in itself, and that should not be the case. Always important just to consider before you put the effort in to creating some media coverage or placing a comment piece to understand what it's actually going to do for you. So really do think about how it's going to further your organization's objectives or further the change objectives for your organization, help and support your beneficiary audience, or perhaps uh, push uh, a stakeholder around a particular piece of policy or a change you want to see made. So the second main purpose of opinion pieces is positioning. Positioning your organization um, as a thought leader on a specific issue or subject or problem, and in some cases also helping to raise the profile of a senior leader within your organization on a particular problem or issue. Uh, third, uh, one of the advantages of a comment piece over and above, say, a news release, um, is that you have some, in fact, almost complete control over the message. It's going to be your words. Uh, they might well be edited down uh, by the media outlet that you place it within, but primarily you're in control of your message. So it is a good opportunity to really get across what you want to say. And then uh, the other purpose is it places your voice um, in front of the audience that you want to reach and engage to. So you've got um, targeted placement in a channel that's going to reach those people and hopefully influence their opinion. So the practicality is creating an opinion piece. Where do you start? Well, the first thing you need to start with is understanding the right theme at the right time. So what is your expertise and stance? Now, there are an awful lot of comment pieces placed by people who are not experts on a specific issue. There are lots of gen generalists with uh, big mouths. Um, that's great. That's one type of uh, comment piece, and we all love to read them, whether they're throff at the mouse pieces or they're snarky uh, pieces that are really trying to denigrate or undercut other people or simply make us laugh and be inter interesting and entertaining. There's a place for all of those but they're probably not the type of um, opinion piece you want to place for your organization. The best type of opinion piece is slap bang in an area that you've got some authority um, and some expertise around. So really do think, uh, what is our organization's expertise? And then just as importantly, what's our stance on the specific issue that we want to comment on? Uh, alongside that, what have you got to say that's new? Have you got something new to say? Have you got some new evidence to impart? Um, have you got a strong opinion on something? Is it going to challenge the orthodoxy or the current debate? Is it going to move things on? Um, then really importantly, I banged on about it already, but how does it fit into your organizational aims and objectives? Don't get lost 
in the rhetoric of what you're trying to do or you think you've got a really creative idea, again, always go back to the basics. Why are we doing it? How is this going to further what we're doing? And then really importantly, why now? Uh, why is this relevant now? How are we going to add to the issue? Uh, are we going to move things on? Don't just write it because uh, for the sake of writing it. It's got to be progressive. It's got to help further one of your objectives and possibly support uh, an audience and help them uh, raise awareness on an issue, change their mind on it, or educate them on a specific thing. So here's a quick exercise for you. Uh, think of a scenario where you're going to have an opportunity to write an opinion piece. Consider the media outlet that you'd write it for. Alongside that, think about the broad audience you're trying to reach out to. Uh, write down the scenario and your thoughts on what that opinion piece could be about. And we're going to return to that as we carry on going through the presentation. So crucially, uh, opinion pieces are not about you. They're about the audience you're trying to reach out to. Okay, so you need to put the audience first. They need to be front of mind. You're writing for them, not for you. So really do think about where the audience interests lie, what their awareness might be, either around you or, or the issue or topic that you're going to be writing about. Where are the touch points? Where does this topic become relevant and interesting to them? And that will differ significantly, both depending on the audience that you're trying to reach out to, and then subsequently the media that you're going to try and place the piece in. Is it going to be sector media? You're reaching out to stakeholders. Will they have a certain level of specialist knowledge um, and understanding around a specific issue? Is it going to be the local or regional media? You're trying to reach a consumer audience more broadly on, a, on an issue that they may not know a huge amount about, in which case you're not going to write in the same way that you would for that sector media audience. Or is it national? Are you trying to do a little bit of both, reach those stakeholders, but also uh, potentially reach a much broader um, public audience as well? And then really importantly, just think through the three things that you want that audience to leave your piece with. What do, you want, what do you want them to think about it? What do you want them to feel about it? And then crucially, do you want them to do something? Is there a call to action in there? Um, is it explicit? Go to a particular website, give us some money. Or is it more implied around changing their opinions or their attitudes towards a specific issue? So you figured out who your audience is. Uh, you know what you want them to think, feel, or do. You then need to make sure that you're creating an authentic and uh, authoritative authorial voice. Now, the best way to think about it, if you're either writing yourself, um, and it's going to be a piece in your name, but for the organization, or you're writing on behalf of somebody else, it's effectively you're wearing a badge throughout this process. So it is you, but uh, you've got a badge, which has got your name on it, and the organization you're from. It's a bit like working in John Lewis. So uh, like somebody who works in John Lewis, you should have some personality. You're a human being. You've got thoughts and opinions on things. Um, and that's really crucial because it's going to make your piece much more interesting, relatable, authentic and engaging. We've all read pieces that have clearly been put together as if they've been written by a corporate spokesperson. They're utterly unengaging and they're cold. So some of your personality has to come out. What's crucial is to understand how much of you should be in there. Uh, so here's some key questions you need to answer yourself when you're developing your authorial voice. How much of you are you comfortable revealing in that opinion piece? So um, there will be some of you in there. Uh, you might want to use everyday relatable examples of your own experience to bring a point to life. You need to decide where that, where that line sits in terms of how much of you is in there. What's your writing style? Uh, there's no point writing as if you're trying to write as somebody else entirely. Uh, your writing style will come through. If you try and write in a writing style that's completely different from how you write, it'll be clunky, it'll be inauthentic, it just won't work. So try and figure out what your writing style is. Then really importantly, what are the red lines for your organization in an opinion piece? For example, um, who or what should you not criticize? Do you have a major funder, for example? Um, do you work have to work very closely in partnership with a set of stakeholders, in which case probably shouldn't think uh, be too explicit in any criticism? criticism of them. Um, how do you talk about and what language do you use when describing your beneficiary audience or those people who use your services? And how do you avoid either victimizing or objectifying them in what you're doing? Figure out what those red lines are and make sure that they're a, a really clear and strict framework and what we, around what you can and can't say in your opinion pieces. So, Here's a quick uh, writing exercise you can do to help understand and develop your own style. So choose a subject or an issue that you're particularly passionate 
and knowledgeable about. Preferably not work related, but if you're completely obsessed about work, then it can be work related. Imagine an audience that you want to engage on this issue. They could be a skeptical audience. They could be an audience that lacks uh, knowledge, understanding about around your particular passion or interest, but have that audience in mind. And just write 200 words about why you feel so passionate about this subject or issue for that chosen audience. And think about what you would say to them to persuade them to uh, share your passion or get interested in what you're talking about. Now, once you've written that, just read it back to yourself. Uh, how, and just answer these really simple questions. How would you describe its style and tone? What stylistic devices have you used? Uh, have you used very long sentences? Are you a big fan of the exclamation mark? Uh, have you used rhetorical questions within there? Um, once you've read it, look at it. How close is it in terms of its style to how your organization communicates? Um, and what wouldn't you be able to use in your opinion piece if it were to come from your organization? Now, the answers to those questions will help you to understand both your own personal writing style, but also how well it fits across the communications of your organization, what you need to leave out, and also uh, which bits you can use to really highlight the core strengths of what you're trying to get across. So crucial to then putting the piece together, uh, there are various little devices you can use to make sure that you don't just sit there and stare at a blank page. Uh, first of all, um, here's a very simple framework to structure your opinion piece. It's called the narrative thread. So it's a classic Hollywood story arc. You start with what their problem or issue is, or the challenge or the opportunity that you want to um, exploit. You then think about what the answer is, what's the solution to that challenge or issue or opportunity. Uh, and then you want to show the journey to delivering that solution. So what are the steps that need to take place and who needs to be involved? And then finally, because we've gone through this whole piece, just remind people either of the core solution that you want to get across or the journey that you've just taken them on. Another way of doing it, particularly if you're writing a comment piece for an audience who don't know you, is to consider it as a pitch to make sure that you get across who you are as an organization uh, and why they should care about you, what you do um, to deliver uh, your core objectives. And then really crucially to bring into life why you're doing it. Why does it matter to the audience you're trying to reach out to? What is it that you're delivering in terms of um, enlightened or even unenlightened self-interest for them? And another way of making sure you're getting all of the points you want to get across in the comment piece is consider using a message house. So this is a tried and tested way of organizing your messages and your narrative, and not just in um, a comment piece of this type, but also in a media interview, in fact, in many different forms of media communication. So across the bottom, at uh, ground floor, you've got your three key messages. So what are the three main things I want to get across in this particular piece? Now, they're fine but actually they only really come to life when you have a proof point for each of them or a number of proof points for each of them. And proof points come in in different types. There is evidence and stats and analysis, and those are good for particular audiences. They can be a bit dry and people can go a bit number blind when it comes to those forms of proof points. So the next stage up is to have a lived experience or an anecdote or a story or a case study. Bring it to life through the human element and the human interest of your particular message. If you tell people that they're going to be 50% more likely to live to 90 if they eat their greens, um, that will hit one particular audience. It won't resonate with everybody. If you tell them that you met Ethel, who's 95, and as a result of eating her greens for the last 50 years, she reckons she'll live till she's 150, more people are going to remember Ethel's story than your original stat. So do think about what the human interest might be. And then finally, the roof. Um, is if there was one thing you wanted people to take away from this particular common piece, what would it be? And then that core one thing that forms the roof, you need to think about how you can sprinkle that into the piece, particularly at the end. So uh, very useful if you can, just to do a quick message house around the opinion piece that you've been thinking about, that we got you to, uh, that I got suggested that you wrote down at the beginning of the training. Uh, maybe look at that again. Now we thought about audience and outlet, tweak it if you need to, and then just create that message house for it with your, your proof points, both whether it's evidence-based, stats and facts, but more crucially, whether there's any stories or lived experience or anecdotes you could use to bring it to life. 
Then when you're actually writing the piece, there are various rhetorical devices you can use to um, make it more interesting and more engaging for the audience. So there's the metaphor or the simile or the analogy, whether it's climbing the mountain, whether it's uh, thinking about overcoming the next obstacle, just think about uh, how you can really relate this to uh, a key well-known metaphor or similar analogy that's really going to uh, get this centered into the experience of your audience. Sometimes there's the meta version of that, that the whole piece um, sits under a specific metaphor, simile or analogy, uh, the climbing the mountain side to it, where there might be a whole series of different metaphors that relate to that core meta metaphor uh, when you're writing the piece, whether it's that you're in the foothills or you reach base camp, uh, that you're in that final struggle to hit the very top of the peak or the summit. So just think about whether there is a rhetorical device like that that can sit across the whole piece and make it as relatable as possible. Uh, imagine if it's just where you might just decide to put a scenario in there to sell the solution or to sell or to really hammer home what the problem might be. Um, the question pause or the link is to allow you to go from one message maybe to another. This might well be that you ask a rhetorical question halfway through, which is, well, how are we going to overcome this challenge? Well, I'm about to tell you. And then you can put in what the answer or solution to that challenge might be. Sometimes it's really helpful to bring in the wit and wisdom of others. Um, most things have been said many times. Sometimes it's quite helpful just look at uh, previous quotes or bring in examples of other people so you can use them to really hammer home your message. And then sometimes it's worth debating within the piece that you're writing, maybe uh, to look 360 around a particular problem and to give a couple of different sides to it. So it could be this or it could be that. So that you're encouraging the reader to think more around a specific issue and it's less hectoring. Um, it, it means you're giving you're certainly giving a compliment to the reader that they understand there's more than one way to view this particular issue. Now, crucially, you'll never be able to use the rhetorical devices if you've bored the pants off the audience you're trying to engage with the, a very dull and leaden opening paragraph or sentence. So try and get the opening right. So here's some very simple ways of doing it. Make it relatable. So to whoever the audience is, and make it relatable to their everyday life. Think about what you can say at that beginning that's going to make them think, yes, I recognize myself in this particular issue. This is why I should carry on reading. Another way of getting that uh, attention grab is to have a stat attack. So tell them from the outset either just how big the problem might be or what a different solution might make, and they're going to read on. Uh, a variation on that previous rhetorical device is to posit a scenario, again, to paint a picture of either the problem or the opportunity that you're going to write about. And then even beyond that is to tell the story. Uh, tell the story of somebody who's personally uh, affected by this or an organization and a situation that really hammers home why it's important for the audience to carry on reading. So just to sum up some of the key considerations as you're putting together your opinion piece. Think about the audience. It's all about them. Walk in their shoes. Why should they read this? What's in it for them? What are you going to tell them that's going to further their interest in it? How are you going to engage them? Always write about what you know. You're the experts on you, in your particular field, and that's what you should write about as much as possible. At the same time, make it human and real. Um, use stories. Try and express the experience of the audience you're trying to reach out to. As much as possible, make the languages as inclusive as you can. We relate much more to you, we, I, and us than they, or them, or the third person. Uh, remember, in almost every context, your piece should be enjoyable. We read and we carry on reading because it's interesting primarily. Um, this is not an academic treatise. Even if you're writing about a technical subject, make it as accessible as possible. Give the reader less excuse to stop reading. Uh, in the same regard, avoid jargon and acronyms. Uh, they creep into everything that we do and sometimes because they're the easiest way to do a shorthand. But just again, think about the audience. Will they understand that acronym? Is it going to be a barrier to them? Are they going to get turned off with the same old jargon? Uh, use specific examples and proof points to really hammer home the message. At the same time, nobody will ever tell you off for writing something in fewer words that you've been given. So be as pithy and sharp, as sharp as you can. Short sentences help with that stylistically. And generally, if you're going beyond 750 words, then you're uh, less likely to maintain the attention of the audience going forward. Now, these things don't come out of the ether. Um, 
opinion pieces get placed because they are pitched um, correctly at the right time and in response to the external world. So just think about why your piece should be published now. It's not enough that you've written it. It's not enough that you think it's important. There must be a reason for the audience to engage around it. So at the same time that you're thinking about doing opinion pieces, constantly do the horizon scan. What's coming up? Are there any new announcements coming up? Are there papers or reports coming out? Is there a new milestone that we're going to hit? Are there any awareness dates that we can build a comment piece around? At the same time, thinking about your stakeholders uh, and your audience trying to reach out to, what are they working on at the moment? What do they care about? Um, anything that you know that's coming from another organization or from yourself that's going to prick the interest of your audience, use that as your reason to pivot towards a comment piece. So, you're going to pitch in your opinion piece. Crucially, uh, you shouldn't write it until you've got somebody who wants to run it. And to do that, you're going to have to pitch them an outline for what it is. So review what you've got again in that um, op-ed piece you've been thinking about. Write your pitch email to them and just give them a summary of the piece that you, uh, you want to place with them. Uh, use the message house format to develop the pitch. Absolutely 100 words max. Those one, two, three points. Um, and include in that pitch the reason why their readership would be interested in it. Not the reason why you think it's important, the reason why their readership will think it's important. Uh, and just if you can, it, include that external hook about why now. A quick checklist when you're putting your piece together. Be clear about what your objective is. You know, I've banged on about it, but make sure you understand who the audience is. Actually think about them as a person. Uh, maybe it's Derek and he's sat at his desk and he's an IT worker. Or, or maybe it's Mabel and she's an overseas aid worker. Just really think about where they are because that's the person you're trying to engage and talk to. And then think about what you want Derek or Mabel to think, feel or do. Then really what's your narrative thread around it. So that's going to really act as the milestones and markers throughout the piece. And uh, what do you want to get across? What's that message house going to contain? What's your grabber? So that they're going to carry on reading from the very beginning. And crucially, where do you need to get to so you don't get lost in all the words that you're trying to write down? And at the same time, what are the red lines? What do I need to avoid? Uh, what's going to uh, cause an issue for a sign off within your organization? Just make sure you're very clear on those red lines. So here's an exercise for you to do whenever you want. Um, it's now it's time to write your piece. Your pitch has been successful. You've got a 500 word limit. Write your piece using the approach that we've just gone through. And then once you've got your first draft, here are the key things you should do every time you write an opinion piece. So read it back and check for repetition, deviation, any long sentences. Uh, read it back again, this time putting yourself in the shoes of, the, of your audience. Uh, will they think, feel, or do what you want as a result of reading this? Uh, list up to the three things you're not happy with or could be improved in the piece. Make those edits, read it back to yourself again, and then this is a really crucial question. Uh, read it back and ask yourself, do I believe what I have written? Because if you don't, change it. Uh, because if you don't believe it, the audience will never believe in it. Then the hardest bit, give it to somebody else, give it to a colleague and ask them to read it, uh, ask them what their opinion is of it, ask them if there's anything that they don't quite understand, any questions they might have and address those questions yeah, when you then do a final edit of the piece. Then once you're done, it's gone through the approvals, get it off. So that was a sort of sprint through how to write opinion pieces. I hope you found it useful um, and uh, well, get writing. Thanks very much. <laughs>